Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to Mastering Accounting Skills, the one and only YouTube channel offering free training on practical accounting skills. Before we go to the topic, hit the subscribe button and switch on the bell icon for getting notification of my new video. Today our topic is Accounting for Accounts Payable. If you are planning to start your career as an accounts payable professional, watch this video till end because in this video we are going to discuss a to Z almost all the things with regard to accounts payable accounting this topic is also of great help if you are expecting any interview for accounts payable role in near future let us go to the topic so guys in this video we will discuss one by one first thing what is accounts payable function then recognition and measurement of accounts payable then recording of accounts payable after that internet controls for accounts payable this is very important topic then ap control general ledger and the subsidy gl accounts reconciliations after that invoice credit terms then we will see ap turnover and finally why it is important to calculate accounts payable turnover ratio in this slide we will see what is accounts payable function what type of duties are involved in this accounts payable role so the duties like keeping track of all the payments and expenditures including vendor invoices, purchase orders, return to the suppliers, vendor statements, payroll and other cash expenses. Reconciling of vendor balances and statements also part of this role. Then maintaining the GL records for each vendor, each head, account head, each expense. Issuing payments as per the agreed terms producing month and payable reports, performing general internal control practices with regard to accounts payable. And secondly, what type of skills and qualifications should an accounts payable accountant have? A degree in finance, economics or business studies or accounting would be beneficial for an accounts payable career. Moreover, attention to detail and data entry skills are very important requirement for an accounts payable role. Employees will be interacting with employers and vendors on daily basis, so professional communication skills are also highly desirable for this role. Accounts payable are specifically the liabilities that the companies owe to their suppliers as the result of purchasing goods or rendering the services on credit. Accounts payable are the types of current liabilities which are normally paid within one year from the purchasing date. Accounts payable is reported in the balance sheet under current liabilities title. It may also include expense payment like salaries, utility bills. However, these will be encountered under the accrued expenses head in the balance sheet. Next thing what we are going to discuss is recognition and measurement of accounts payable. Accounts payable are the balance sheet items and the recognition of them is the result of the accrual basis of accounting. Under cash basis accounting, there is no accounts payable account. However, if your accounting records are prepared in accordance with US GAAP or IFRS, then you should record and recognize accounts payable whenever you buy goods or services on credit. You can recognize accounts payable only if you have a contract or received an invoice for the supply from your supplier. In case if the supplier has not sent you the invoice at the time of delivery, then you should record the accrual liability at the end of the month based on the expected amount because you need to close the month. So that's why you need to record this entry with an expected amount based on the historical cost of the, that supply.
course payable is quite simple. For example, if you have purchased the goods for 1000 dirham on credit, you will record this transaction as you will give debit to inventory or expense account 1000 and accounts payable you will give credit with 1000. You will create your liability. And at the time of payment, you will pass the entry accounts payable you will give debit and cash or bank whatever you have paid uh, to the supplier you will give credit with 1000 amount guys next slide is very important this is the internal control checklist for the accounts payable so here is your checklist for the accounts payable controls now one by one we will discuss each of these uh, internal controls for the accounts payable the first one is PO approval controls. PO actually refers to the purchase order. So PO approvals are a critical component of the PO process. Manual PO approval process provide poor internal controls and can result in fraud, errors and missed opportunities. On the other hand, automating PO approvals creates an easy way that provides massive efficiency to the PO approval process. Using PO automation, managers can approve POs from anywhere in the world on the device with a single click. It also provides total transparency into the approval process for each and every PO. Next internal control for AP is invoice approval controls. Each invoice must be paid. This is relatively simple in a PO process because the PO has already been approved. But in case there is no pre-approval for a non-PO invoice, in that case, non-PO invoices need to go through an invoice approval process within the buying organization before being paid. Third internal control is three-way matching. The accounts payable process often uses a technique that is known as a three-way match. To assure that only valid and accurate vendor invoices are recorded and paid. The three-way matching involves matching of three important documents for accounts payable. Number one is purchase order. Number two is goods receiving report and number three is supplier invoice. If all of these three documents are in agreement, only in that case a vendor's invoice will be entered into the accounts payable account and scheduled for the payment. Next internal control is data entry controls. Data entry input controls are the key controls that every company should have implemented in a business process. It actually ensures that all the relevant information from a supplier's invoice has been correctly entered into the accounts payable. Therefore, all the data entered into the accounting system must be checked by other staff members regularly. AP automation can also help ensuring both the efficiency and accuracy of the data entry process. The last and very important internal control is the payment controls. Before you make any payment, a duplicate payment search can help in reducing double payments and also serve as an additional layer of protection against fraud. First of all, make sure all the issued payments so far are updated into the system before making any payment. Secondly, before issuing any payment, you can ask the supplier to provide you the statement of account and match your system report with that statement of account. If there is any differences, first of all, clear the differences and then you can make the payment. At third, check with the stores people or any relevant department if there is any return or the debit note still pending and not updated into the system then first update that return and the debit note into the system and, and after deducting that debit note or the return you can make the payment to the supplier and once again in manual AP processes duplicate payment searches are somewhere between difficult and impossible AP Automation performs duplicate payment search very easy. In this slide we will see how to reconcile the accounts payable, control account and the subsidiary account. Okay, First for the control account we will use this formula accounts payable 
plus the total purchases minus all the payments issued during the month and finally the accounts payable closing balance so this accounts payable opening balance is the uh, balance as per the trial balance for the previous month okay and uh, this is during the month we uh, total purchases 45000 and during the month total issued payments 85550 less the closing balance for the current month trial balance closing okay so this is the formula like this you can double check that all the payments uh, all the accounts payable balances for the control account is accurate and perfect then for the subsidiary account reconciliation first of all you need to check all the data entries with regard to the uh, journal entries you make for the suppliers uh, accounts payables uh, expenses okay and the purchase invoices and all the issued payments and the credit notes so all the data entry you need to double check that it is perfect only entered everything okay there is no mistake then secondly you need to ask the supplier to provide you the, the statement of account then you will match your statement of account with the supplier statement of account if there is any differences you can correct that one then at the final again for the each subsidiary ledger you will do also the same opening plus purchases minus the payments so it will give you the closing balance for the uh, current month trial balance for the uh, any particular supplier account okay in next slide we will discuss the invoice credit terms okay these actually refers to the time when an invoice becomes due and whether a discount may be taken if the invoice is paid sooner for example there is a payment term net due on receipt it means when you will receive the supplier invoice same time it will become due and you need to make the payment in that time then net 30 days it means that the invoice if you have suppose if you have received one invoice on 20 of september so after completing of 30 days that is um, on 19 of october or 20 of october it will become due and you need to make the payment after completing the 30 days then 110 and 30 it means that the payment terms are uh, uh, if you will pay the invoice after 30 days you need to pay full invoice but if you will pay mm, uh, uh, within 10 days not in 30 days then you will get 1% discount similarly another payment terms is 210 and 30 like the payment term is 30 days you can make full invoice payment after 30 days but if you will pay the invoice after 10 days then you will get 2% uh, discount on the invoice in next slide we will see the accounts payable turnover ratio accounts payable turnover ratio refers to the number of times a company pays its creditors during an accounting period the ap turnover is simply the ratio that defines how quickly a business clears its dues to its suppliers a high ratio means a company pays quickly and a low ap turnover ratio indicates a company clear the payable slowly the formula to calculate ap turnover ratio is accounts payable turnover ratio that is equal to total purchases divided by average AP turnover it is important for businesses to monitor their accounts payable turnover that work on the credit terms with their suppliers accounts payable turnover ratios can be interpreted differently for instance a high AP turnover ratio means a company has a sufficient cash balance and is paying its invoices very quickly the same high AP turnover may also mean that the company is not 
strategically utilizing the credit terms offered by its suppliers. Also, the company does not exercise the negotiation powers with its creditors to extend the credit terms. Similarly, a low AP turnover means a company is paying less frequently. It may mean that the company is fully utilizing the credit terms offered by its creditors. However, it may also mean that the company is struggling for the cash. Creditors and suppliers also keep an eye on the AP turnover ratio of the companies. They can extend credit terms if they see a positive trend in AP turnover ratio of a business consistently. In short, a healthy AP turnover ratio as compared to the industry bank marks means good financial strength of a company. It gives creditors confidence and that they may extend the credit terms generously. like this video share it with your friends who are studying or working in the accounting profession thank you